Genesis 3 is not about Telford work. And yet, the failure in Genesis 3 is also my failure. How did that happen? How did sin spread? In Barron's words, how is sin propagated? I'm going to give you two major answers to how sin spreads, how the condition spreads. The first one, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give you the Augustinian position on this, the one that dominates in the Western church where Augustine is most influential. Augustine read texts like Romans 5, where on Adam's account, said sin spread to all human beings. Or Psalm 51, where the psalmist is saying, where did my failure, when was I not a failure? In sin, my mother conceived me. I mean, I, I've, been a, I've been a failure from the very, very beginning. He reads those texts and ponders the problem of sin and the problem of persistence in sin, of sin and explains it in terms of original sin. Now, original sin doesn't refer to the, the eating of the forbidden fruit in the garden. Original sin refers to the originating and, and, um, and propagated sin that all of us have ended uh, have, have, have ended up in. How do we end up in this condition of original sin? Well, we inherit it. It's around us and before us and of us from our very beginning. Augustine had a biological account of how sin spreads and it'll make you, uh, it'll make you smile. It, 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 it rests on the, you know, popular ancient understanding of how reproduction worked. When you look at plants, how do plants reproduce? Um, well, they produce <coughs> seeds and the seeds are planted and grow into full-size plants. Well, where's, where's human seed? Well, human seed is in the Father. The word sperma is the word for seed, planted in the womb of the woman. That's an ancient way of understanding reproduction. They didn't know about things like chromosomes and meiosis and so on. The ancients thought of me as having been in my father's loins. Who was in his father's loins? Who was in his father's loins? And all the way back, all of us were literally in Adam. And so when the consequences are announced or the curse is proclaimed on Adam, it's on us too. What about Jesus? Oh, well, see, Jesus wasn't in his human father, was he? His absence of a, of a patrilineage, a human patrilineage keeps him exempt from this, and God protects his mother as well from any stain of sin so that he is manifestly born sinless. That's, that's Roman Catholic dogma now. And so he is uniquely worthy as a human being to win us our worthiness. That's hard to maintain genetically, isn't it? If you've taken a science course, it's hard to see this. Uh, maybe you're like, well, no, that's okay, because we were all in our DNA. We were all DNA of the gene pool, and the whole gene pool must have been present there. Except, well, I mean, are, are genes cursed? Is DNA <laughs> cursed? That's harder to understand, right? Um, guilt is something that pertains to persons, not, not amino acids, you know not proteins. So uh, some people reject the doctrine of original sin on the grounds that it was, it was uh, either they, they, they disagree with it morally or they disagree with it scientifically and just say, well, it was the, it was the product of a pre-modern way of understanding that, that turns out to have been wrong. But I want to give you a different way of understanding original sin, which I think um, 
outlives the biology of the ancient world. Think of how we inherit legal conditions. I'll give you an example. You were born, um, those of you who are American citizens, you were born in debt. You were born on the hook for the national debt. So you and I, I was born with it too. We are, we are as a people, we are as a, as a state liable for the obligations of actions that we didn't make. And our children and grandchildren are going to be liable for those earlier actions and our own. And conversely, you know, we, we also inherit good things. We don't just inherit bad things. We inherit infrastructure. We inherit cultural and legal traditions and the like that, that we are born into. And they can be blessings, they can be curses. That's not problematic, right? Um, we inherit liabilities. And guilt is a liability. Guilt is a responsibility and accountability for, for a, an action or a deed. Now, the Western Church, which comes to include both Catholics and Protestants, subscribes to Augustine's doctrine of original sin. It, 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 it received it, accepted it, passed it along, and so that's kind of intuitively how the theological tradition is, has understood it. The East, the Christian East, so the Eastern Roman Empire, uh, which is now represented by Eastern Orthodox Christians, weren't such fans of Augustine. And they reject Augustine's understanding of original sin. How does sin, how is sin transmitted? Well, who's had, uh, who's had a common cold? Have you had a common cold? Yeah, anybody not had a cold? Yeah, of course you all had colds. But you didn't get that direct, did you? Your mother or your father did not pass on that affliction in the womb. You, it, it's just something that comes alongside and is in the midst of the human community. And it, it, it reaches all of us early enough, quite early, that we're all, we're all afflicted. That's more like the Eastern doctrine of original sin, which has it transmitted across the relationships that make us human in the first place. What makes us human? Relationships make us human. Relationships with God, with one another, and with the rest of creation. And we transmit sin relationally. I have four sinners as children. How did they become sinners? Well, Dad made them sinners. And Mom. I fell short. I taught them, not just wrong, but I, I taught them wrong. They learned wrong from me. They experienced injustice and neglect, and just ignorance and foolishness, not just from mom and dad, from friends, from teachers, from coaches, from the wider culture, from TV, from wherever. We all constantly pass along sin. So, Eastern Orthodox, Following um, teachers, earlier teachers like John Cassian, Cassian understand sin, I'm going to call it ancestral sin, that's passed along, not legally, not biologically, but relationally, socially. And uh, both can be true, right? I can be in debt because I'm an American and I'm subject to the national debt, but I can also vote for policies that worsen the debt and pass along the same attitude and make other voters that worsen our debt.